thank you so much, and thank you for coming here this afternoon. It's a pleasure for me to share with you several ideas, techniques, and exercises that have helped me over the years improve my playing, gather an easier feel, a more natural approach to violin playing. And I personally did Alexander Technique uh, for about three years when I was studying in Freiburg in Germany. And when working with my students, a lot of whom never did one-on-one -on -one Alexander Technique lessons, I was trying to find ways to give them those concepts, those uh, kinesthetic feelings that I had <coughs> learned through Alexander Technique. So the session here today is uh, in order to give you some ideas that you can help your students get to those concepts. These are very simple exercises, very basic uh, techniques. Uh, and the Alexander Technique goes from the premise that every person is born pretty much with a easiness, with a natural ability to use their body and that through the years and bad habits, we mislearn that. And with help of Alexander Technique or other methods that help us keep getting more aware of our, the use of our body, we can recover them. Uh, that. Of course, there's several examples of people who have a fantastic use of their body without the need of any extra help. One, of, one example of what happens <coughs> in the years and uh, a way to notice that hindering of natural good use of the body is the starter reflex. That reflex that kicks off when we see a rattlesnake that we are about to kick or when we are about to step in a cliff and our body paralyzes. A very useful reflex for those cases but rather counterproductive when we are before an audition, before a concert or about to be <coughs> shaped. So all of these methods will help us not get in the way of the natural use of our body. We are trying to let go, and when we do these exercises, when we are on stage, when we are practicing, what our brain is doing is kind of the system checking a car, going through all parts of the, the body, checking that everything is just fluid, that, that we are not interfering. A few general concepts, and then we will go to the practical exercises, and then I will invite you to, to join me in a few or several of those. The principles of Alexander Technique are to be applied to all daily movements. When you see great players, it's not that they start playing the instrument and everything changes. Yes, there's something that happens when we go on stage, but the goal is to have the good use of our body all the time, pretty much not change anything for the worse when we grab the instrument and not create unnecessary tensions in that moment. When we see great players, those fantastic players that we admire, everyone has a different take, <coughs> they have a, a different approach to the instrument, they hold the bow differently, they have a slightly different angle, and of course they have different bodies. But what I see is that there are there's something else that is general to all of them, and that's the ease of movement, the freedom of movement, and the balance. And these exercises today are have the goal of getting the, those feelings. It's important when we're playing and when we're doing these exercises to be more aware of the body than in getting <coughs> the end result fine. As soon as we try to only get the goal right, we get back, uh, back to old habits. In the same sense, we need a lot of patience with ourselves, with other, with our body, and not getting emotional about mistakes because all of that gets into our back and gets to the old habits, uh, old habits. Also, we have to take care with the concept of concentration. We, as we will be talking about different parts of our body and how to relax them, how to be more aware all the time at the beginning and at the end, and when we do them, it's about a full concept of the body, about a general feeling of the body that will help the individual parts. You probably know this, but we have to stay away of repeat and repeat and repeat. 
during our practice. In the moment of the concert, we will have to do this from scratch, like a, ra a race car driver. In the moment of the concert, we have to do every single car, we will have to do every single movement, and the concept of hope, uh, that big hope that doing it 20 times in the practice studio, will, we will be able to do this in automatic pilot, doesn't work uh, in the heat of the battle. We have to, what we have to practice in the practice room is to be free, and in all circumstances. So, few, a couple of more things before starting the practical exercises. Don't forget to breathe when you're doing this. Don't forget to, <laughs> to breathe in the concerts. That's also one movement stopping reaction. A lot of people have little tiny spasm or hiccups when they are playing and they hope that with a little tension before the shift, before the difficult passage that will improve. And that's pretty much the opposite of what happens. If anything, if there's any instant of awareness before that shift, before the difficult passage, before we go into the stage, it's just release. And for that, we will be doing all these exercises to help us release and get aware of different parts of our body and help our students do so. As a little disclaimer, please take care of your body and your instrument when you do this, <laughs> or get a good insurance. <laughs> um, so uh, first, uh, to, to show the concept of allowing movement. I will ask Patricia to push me, and first I will resist the movement. After that, I will ask her to do the same, but I will allow, I will be free to go anywhere. <laughs> so the second is what we are looking. It's very basic, very primitive, but that's the concept of allowing the body to go whenever we are, our body is ready to go in any direction. And believe it or not, and a lot of the exercises we'll show you today, a lot of times when we are playing, for some extraneous reason, we are stuck there. And, and as if someone told us, just there you move the elbow. And, and we are stuck with a subconscious rule that we are not even aware. Uh, so, another interesting concept is how to get power without effort. And for that, I invite you to show the tips of your fingers and make a circle, like a circle just expanding from all the system here, just expand. And hopefully, if the experiment works, you will feel that there's a tiny tension in the tips of your fingers, more than when you were just like this you expand. And if you feel so, that, that would be the, a demonstration that just expanding, just getting more room in your joints can create this a fantastic effect that, that is, has nothing to do with pressing. We will start uh, going through our body, through the head, neck, spine, shoulders. Let's call it system. We, we, we are looking for a feeling like someone is pulling from a string from our head. It's not about moving. You don't need to move. Nothing to do with the good student or military position. Nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with moving. Just a slight feeling that your head is going up and your neck is expanding, allowing your head to go forward and up. At the same time, we are looking to release all the body using gravity, releasing our butt, that I will be speaking a lot about in today, letting the weight go into our knees, into the sole of our feet, and please stand up if you, if you want. And go, go just a little bit, a tiny bit <coughs> into your knees. Squeeze your butt, butt to make sure that you're not crunching. And can you feel the, the weight on the sole of your feet go a little bit more? Your thighs will be working. Can you feel that? Only this is working, but on the lower back, it's just very relaxed. And go again up. 
And now add to that the feeling of just an imaginary string pulling you up. So it's two completely opposite feelings that are acting all the time, dynamically, at the same time. Uh, feel free to, <laughs> to see if you want. So we are feeling all the time an upward uh, and a downward flow. At the same time, we are feeling those kind of imaginary arrows here. A lot of people, especially women, tend to do like this. And what we are looking for is just to open up here and have, it's not about emotion, it's a feeling of lightness. It's the same thing with here. It's not some, a movement, but rather a feeling that we are looking for. In Alexander Klenik, there's a lot of time to talk how important the neck and the, the neck is in, in all the body. And to get a feeling of this, I will ask you to go forward, and you will see that it's impossible to do this movement if the head is not leading the upper body, when you just go like that. So it's very, again, primitive, basic concept, but we cannot do anything pretty much if the head is not leading. Another way to visualize this, I will ask you to Tense your neck, shorten your neck, higher your shoulders, and now try to go up with your arms and wiggle your fingers. It feels great, right? <laughs> <laughs> and now release. See how my voice changes. This is also a concept. And in fact, uh, Mr. Alexander was um, a theater uh, actor who had problems with his voice, and he created all this thing to help him get his voice back. Now please wiggle again. And you see that the motion is much freer, is easier, and you can reach farther, right? So this is just a tiny demonstration how as soon as we let go movement by itself without having a 30 volumes of books on how to do this, it just is easy. And it, there's not much more to do. Uh, now, um, with the, Patricia, I want to, and Alexander Technich will uh, guide with his or her hands a lot. And we're trying here to do a few exercises to feel that by ourselves. So I will ask you to move, and you're invited to stand up and, and try this. Very gentle moves with your head. head. Just feel the gravity. Let your head go in different directions. So I'm not asking you to let fall your head because that would probably hurt. But the idea is that you make sure that when you're letting it go, there's not that sort of hiccup or angst, being afraid of and stopping that. So just. Now when you go up again to the center, feel like your head is kind of floating from the very last vertebrae. And if you want, feel again that string and feel again how the weight is going down. Great, now one that is much more imminent the feeling. Go with your shoulders up and now let them fall. And this feels great, right? And so many times during the day, whatever we are doing is, is it in the computer or driving the car or going backwards with the car and checking like this, we are doing a little bit like this to a certain degree, it's 3%. And weird enough, when we are playing a string instrument, we, we tend to do the same and it doesn't really help us. So ask your students, okay, another one. Is, let's let's do it with one hand. And now, when I do so, please let it fall completely. Not nothing is going to happen. Nothing should happen. It's, it will hang there. This is great. <laughs> Most of the times, when you're doing this with your students, what ha will happen is this. 
And th that means that somewhere along the way, be it at the very end, they are just stopping the movement for some mysterious reason. So you want, you want to hear, again or with all time, and now that you combine it again, it feels really good to be like this, right? And seldom we have this feeling. This feeling that you have right now is how we want to be playing the instrument. Nothing should be different than this. When we are playing, if you could uh, grab the instrument, we have to remember, we might have never had a head in our hands, but I can guarantee you, I didn't either, but it's heavier than the violin. So by the merely mer fact of being there, the violin won't fall. There's no need to do any kind of force whatsoever. So we have to remind ourselves and our students how they simply just need to do nothing uh, to hold the violin. And also to try this, you can ask them, uh, maybe you can show some open strings to release, to take off. Uh, you can see the, if you want for, <laughs> for a, a couple of seconds. Um, uh, to take off their head when they are playing, move it slightly in different directions. say, but freeze, stop in the movement to correct, to release certain aspects. I want you to go there because your sound is a little bit flat that one. Try the same and let the energy come from your lower mass. in the body, if not the, the most powerful, uh, and we love crunching our teeth. So a good way to be aware of that is just putting a cookie. <laughs> uh, put. And you want a pretzel? <laughs> teacher grabbing parts of the, the student's uh, body, the, the extremities, the arms, the legs, the head, and doing gentle movements so that you see that you are not, that you are allowing the movement. So I will do just uh, two couple of indications to Patricia and then we will do some stuff with the violin. So I will ask you to put your hands on your lower back and then just pull away. And you can do this alone at home. So you put your your hand. Uh, it's very difficult to do it standing, but just maybe to remember, you can try it. And then you pull. And when you do this lying down, it's incredible because all your lower back will go to the floor and it will feel very good. You will be enjoying the floor. Another exercise is putting your hand like this under your shoulder blade. Hopefully you will have at that point one hand that will help. Mm -hmm. and, and then you will also 
leave it there for 20 seconds and then slowly pull it away. And that will help your shoulder blades go into the floor. So with those two, you will hopefully do it a couple of times in every shoulder and on your lower back, back you will have the feeling of all, all your back touching the floor. And well, I will ask you to take the violin. And I recommend that you uh, never try it with the cello. Might not work. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, if you play violin or viola, try playing on the floor. It's incredible. Some things will be very weird because the gravity is acting in a completely different way. But the great thing is that a lot of the weird things, unnecessary things that we do, will re become even more ridiculous. For example, this one and this one will become completely noticeable. <coughs> Try to play a few of this one. single uh, mistake or not. But I did like this and I kind of uh, suggested that she goes a little bit like this and even the left hand improved. If someone could volunteer and I will show how it feels when you're, ho when you're holding, it feels kind of, imagine that there's here a string and a weight hanging from your shoulder blade. That's the feeling that we want to get. A lot of times without noticing that a little bit we just rise our shoulder blade and that translates in, into all of this. So if someone could come and hold my arm, please. Anybody? Yeah, yeah. we're <laughs> So first up, I will really in, enjoy the, the support, so <laughs> it's quite heavy. A little bit higher, please. A little bit higher, please. Okay. So is it a little bit heavy? I'm not pushing, I promise, it's, it's just a way. I, I told you the head would be probably worse. And, and now I'm, I'm going to do a tiny hiccup. Yes, yeah, so especially with shifts, you will realize as your students hold it, and when they do shifts, they will feel like this. Like a little, and when one is the opposite. In the moment before and right while you're doing it, all the weight, goes down. Thank you so much. So it's it's really heavy and so it's incredible how much how much work we are unnecessarily doing when we play and how good it feels when you're not doing believe me. When nobody's holding the feeling is exactly the same. This is hanging like from a core from a hanger. There's the, it cannot go lower even if the don't, don't want to so rising this just that doesn't do the job doesn't help at all. Another uh, good exercise is to let go. And I will hold the scroll of the violin 
and I will ask her to completely let go her arm. Again, it's quite heavy. And it feels like, you know, those Spanish hands hanging. That, that, that's the idea. And if you like, do like this, this is correct what she's doing. Most of the time, your students will look, and you will do like this, and nothing will happen. Yeah? So, um, another idea is to ask them, like I was saying, just say when they are playing. Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, so to stop right when they are playing, ask them to stop and to balance their elbow one way and the other. There's people, or, or for some pieces you want to have it, it's not about the position, but the feeling that it could go anywhere. And a lot of times we are looking for some weird reason, we are in a place that is not convenient for the piece, for the sheet. Same thing, uh, same thing when we are going to an upper position. A lot of uh, students will have the elbow in a position that doesn't allow to go up. So they will kind of hit, hit here and be stuck to go higher. And in my view, it's not only it's not only about telling them, okay, anticipate the movement, go here, change like uh, in the car driving, third, uh, you know, it's not about this and this, but rather of being able to go anywhere. Imagine that, in a way, imagine the hand is a fly, and all of this system is just a string. So the fly can go anywhere. It's not that you have three bones that have to anticipate the movement and, and move mechanically. So when you get this image, this picture, this feeling, you can do pretty much anything. It will go and you, you don't need to intellectualize. You don't need to understand what's happening. You're just free and it goes. Feels, it's a, a very good feeling and it might sound a little bit metaphysical until you really feel it and it's very powerful, very physical uh, and, and um, now let's go to further away to the extremities, to our hands. See when I'm just being myself and I'm kind of relaxed, not afraid that I'm going to play uh, a Paganin uh, Caprice in the next three seconds, my hands are kind of like this. If you, why don't we try it? Put your hands like this, and you can let them uh, anywhere. So when we play the instrument, what we're looking is that feeling. Just simply don't change anything. Most of the times, a lot of people, what they do is, imagine a chicken hand that someone pulls all the tendons and it crunches like this. That's a lot, that's the, maybe the extreme what happens in when things go wrong. So all of this has to be very loose and pretty much we simply just don't need to change anything. Also about the movement in the fingers, when you ask your students what's actually moving in the hand, what's the measurement, and of course there's a lot of tiny motions, but what's ultimately the, the big motion that we see, and they will tell you everything possible, but the, the bigger movement that is happening. You know, when you ask them, where is that happening? Could you, could you show me where, where is their the joint, where's this movie? Um, here. Eh? Great, great. She said here, and that's the, the, the great answer. Most of the people will, will say here in this line. And if you see, it's right here, then it will be here or here. And a good understanding where this, this is happening can help a free movement. <laughs> In order also to help them not to squeeze the left hand, is to ask them to release the thumb. Stop them when they are playing, ask them to move their thumb around, ask them to play difficult passages without the thumb. The thumb, in my opinion, most of the time, it's just, you know, when a pianist is after a concert and just greeting the audience, it's just kind of a sense, a, a, a tiny guy. Yeah, you're still here. Yeah, but it's not. <laughs> you have it for your life. It won't help you uh, in playing the violin. Or, or, or. Another uh, good idea uh, to, to help with this is if you could. Oh, 
to put them a sharpie beneath the, the fingers or above the thumb, because this is also a string player's favorite, to crunch both thumbs in both hands, like, I don't know, like a, how do you say this tool? No, well, a sample could be also or the, but, yeah. Um, I don't know for what reason that happens, but the thumbs is essential that we don't squeeze them. And this, when it's squeezed, it will be a, it will hurt a little bit or will be, will be even more popular, and that will be a reminder to just let go the thumb. Now let's go to the right arm. I will ask Patricia to play around with the bow as if it would be a sword, maybe take it a little bit higher up so that you don't break it. So again, make a clarion insurance before. Yeah, don't do this with an expensive bow. So the, the, the goal is to fill the bow as a continuation of our arm to be completely free. Take care. Uh, so you, you really want to do it in the middle because it's dangerous. <laughs> but uh, it's great that you are not afraid uh, of breaking it. But the natural tendency is that we don't have this freedom. We, are, we have kind of limits and are afraid. And this we need. This kind of freedom we need when we play. Again, these are very, very, very basic elements we are talking about. But in my belief, this is way more important than those 30 books that tell you how little this motion you have to go and wrap here, and see, and, and there. We don't learn how to walk that way. And playing an instrument is more complex than walking, but if we try to, to learn it that way with little tiny instructions on, on the way, it just will feel like that at the end. Uh, now I invite you again to please stand up. Please uh, take care of the chairs and with your neighbors, maybe. And please move this to this motion and feel very free. And now, let's go. So this is also an essential motion that a lot of times we stop in straight play. And now this one is less known. I will ask you to wrap all the stuff that you have underneath your arm feet and just squeeze it. And now move your forearm like this, and you want to be sure that you're not doing a hiccup. A lot of people will have something like this kind of thing, but inside here. So a lot of string players do these little kicks, have these little kicks when they play in the bow arm. That is not, doesn't help the sound, doesn't help the change, uh, of bow, if anything, it goes on the way. It's completely unnecessary, and you will see a lot of players, even some very good, very fine players, have this little key. How you get, like all of this, how, how do you get rid of that? How do you relax? That's not simple. That takes time and a lot of patience. So, if you want to see, again. So, the way to, for example, get rid of this key is just Try. Eventually, it will happen that you, it, you do it without that key. And that first realization is essential. The first time you do it without the, the little key uh, is very important. And then, again, just don't try hard. It's not, <coughs> and it will happen. Just doesn't, the body doesn't work like that. And so that's what we are, are looking for in the practice room, too. If we repeat, it's just to experience it again. And eventually having it so in, as a kinesthetic feeling that we can, with our brain, just say, just do it. I can do it or not do it. Like when I, you were holding my, my elbow, I can decide if I let go or not. And it's something that I decide uh, in an instant. So that's what we are practicing. Another very basic is, no, you can do it in the air, but we were doing it already. Just move your forearm, the, the bow arm. And this needs to be like a hinge, a very extremely old point. Not like those one on the door, see? Those don't work like this. Those work like, uh, so what we're looking is those without a spring, those doors. And this is such a basic movement, and so many times when we play, uh, it's stuck. It's stuck here, and it's stuck here. 
uh, as if someone would say, there you move beyond that. So when we don't have these little stops, at the end I was starting to do some hiccups. But what we are looking is this. And again, going to the flautato and with, uh, with, uh, without and with playing through the floor, if I'm all relaxed in my upper body and I just play very loose, this is a nicely open sound, but rather flautato. When I add the release, and I'm not pressing, I'm not doing. Pressing with my index finger, it's just releasing everything in the floor <coughs> and allowing the movement to be, to be free. <coughs> and see how the violin is still sounding. Very different when you press, the sound dies as soon, it dies right away. Uh, and now we can start without the violin, please. And something that Alexander's. Uh, teachers do a lot of what they do is probably we are not instructed to do so and we cannot but this is very basic and I think it's fine enough to do in the lessons to take the arm the hand of a student and move it in different directions what we are looking for is that the student doesn't block the movement a lot of times you will feel right away little stops so you want to be able to go anywhere with both arms very, very helpful for the students because they will realize right away or you tell them you were blocking. Another one is to hang them up back from the shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you probably at this point told the student relax and it didn't work, so <laughs> if they hang that will oblige them to have a low shoulder. Can you play it? You know? Another way, I, I never did in reality, but I use the picture a lot and it seems to work, is to tell them to imagine a hot, wet towel hang, hanging from their shoulder. That feeling of something very comfortable, warm, that allows them to expand that joint. Another exercise that is great and very few people try is to grab the ball with two fingers from the uh, screw. As you see, you can have a great sound with this. It's only the 60 grams. Please translate it to, to, to American English. <laughs> but this weighs nothing. And I'm only guiding, I'm just saying the direction, I'm not doing anything. And, and you can get a great sound. I'm not pressing with my finger. So what happens, imagine an old LP player. When the students are tensing the shoulder blade or any part of their arm, the bow will start to do little jumps here and there. So this does two things. Show them that just these motions that we were speaking about, just a loose elbow, is enough. It's everything we have to do and release the, the shoulder blade. And also, this will tell them right away, the sound will tell them right away, there's something that's sour. And you can play a concerto like this. You can play Mozart, and it's possible, and, and it's a great talk to learn this basic movement that is, you can cover pretty much everything with this <coughs> motion. Now let's uh, move on to, to the right arm. And you can do the same as we were saying for the, for the left arm. You can Students to find a piano, a book, 
rules or whatever, and practice. If they are practicing 10 hours a day, let's say, always again every 30 minutes, one minute like that, uh, to grab the sense and ask them to feel the same uh, when they are not doing it. Also try this, to ask them to change the, uh, the position of the elbow. Again, I could care less about this or this or this. The thing is that they, that is completely free, and their body will tell them what's the best for them. And also uh, an exercise that is not very widely known. I actually stole it from Anna Chumachenko, and I think she stole it from Casals, Pablo Casals, is to grab the ball like this. And this will help you to just fancy, in a fancy free way, get all, all release and have the, the energy coming through, from the floor, through your lower back, through your shoulders. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Everything is free. Then you go to the middle phalange, <coughs> to the middle, first joint of the fingers, and you try to recreate that. It's going to be farther away, a little bit more uh, subtle joints, but we are looking for the same feeling. And then we go to the place where we usually hold the ball, ball and we try to get the same sound and the same feeling. Also, uh, a good way to help them differentiate movements is to ask them to not only rest the elbow, but rest the forearm and do this motion for the, for, for the wrist and this for the fingers. And ask them also to do changes of strings. Now I'm still adapting to my head. So that all of this wakes up. And speaking of waking up, and this is maybe not as much of directly from Alexander Technique, but I encourage all my students to do a lot of exercises with the extremities to wake up and the feeling and awareness of the fingers, and you probably know a lot of this, but the windshield wiper only with the pinky working, and I always encourage them to do this with a pencil as well, this up and down. Uh, then picking up different fingers, combinations of fingers, uh, without the thumb, again, get a good Bible insurance. Uh, <laughs> this one is a, a tiny bit more difficult if you never tried it. Again, these are not abilities. I, I could care less about that, uh, that precisely, but it's like I, I tell them the image of you know getting a good chocolate ice cream in your mouth and really wanting to enjoy it and with your tongue just feeling. And how about doing that kind of fine motion with your fingers, or really feeling the ball uh, with your fingers? So that's what we are looking for. And going to the final part of this presentation, I want to speak again about the grounding. That's so essential for playing a string instrument. Grounding, again, is just letting go everything into the floor and, and having that feeling of connection to the floor. And a great way, also I, I haven't seen many people teaching this way, is to ask the students to squat against the wall. Like this. The tights, and well, unfortunately, the walls here were especially preferred not to be able to do this exercise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you if you do this, your tights will be working a lot, but the rest of your body is just going to be enjoying. It feels great. Your lower back, and see again. I, I don't know if you realize, but my voice. I'm not doing more force, but this is helping my voice to just project better by doing nothing. And your lower back is going to be feeling the wall. Your, your upper body is going to relax and enjoy that it has such a good support. Mm -hmm. And you can do this, play the violin, do with this.
can ask them to play very difficult pieces again with that. There's also an, an exercise where, where the teacher, but again, the, I'm not sure that one is uh, fine and uh, good for the classroom and it recovers a lot, a lot of force from the teacher is to call the, the student's knees. So the student won't even need to re uh, work with his or her tights. Does it make sense? They will release all and the teacher holds here. For the teacher, it's a lot of energy, so I'm not sure if you want to do that. But if you find <laughs> some piece of furniture that you can put and try, it just feels great. Uh, and it gives you a lot of energy. When you're playing in real life, what you're looking for is all these feelings that we are speaking about. And a way to grab that same feeling, and again, I would encourage to do that, a few times when you're practicing for a couple of minutes is what we were saying of going a little bit in your into your mind. If you want to try it one more time, going a little bit into your knees, relax a feeling that you're not tensing your back, and going a tiny bit forward with your upper body, not carving. This is it's kind of a monkey position. Maybe it looks a little bit weird, but and hang all your upper body, make sure that that's great. And now when you go up again, you want not, not to change anything. Your knees will be almost completely straight now, but your body is still be releasing everything into the knees, into the floor, and your arms will be hanging here, and your, and your head is going to feel like being pulled by a string going to the city. So please, please sit again. So what we are looking at the beginning and at the end of this is to combine all these elements, all this uh, dissection of the, the body that we might have done. So eventually we have one to get one feeling for the complete body. It helps me to have a couple of words. It could be as ridiculous as play from your butt or feel the floor or, or feel the energy from your floor. You choose your couple of words, or maybe even better, an image that helps you relax, uh, relax and get all that energy. Another uh, way that helps me a lot is not words or an image, but the sound that I want to get. That's actually the best, because the sound helps you right away when you are squeezing or when you're not letting go. And one little remark, this has nothing to do with a plane that is lack of energy. It's just about releasing the joints to allow that energy to flow into the extremities and that it can translate into music, into sound. Um, a couple of, uh, we have a few more minutes, a, a couple more um, exercises. Is, uh, you can ask your students to walk while they're playing. So you will realize that a lot of times we're sitting and we are forced to lock that this motion is just not possible. Yeah? So you want to, to, to check that. And this, like all the other exercises that we have been spe uh, speaking, are like that system checking the car, little checkups that help us see if everything is free. So again, thank you so much for, for coming today. I hope this helps you and that you can integrate all of these ideas into your playing. 
into your teaching. Um, there's a lot of information in the handout. There's also a much longer paper that I, I have ready and I will soon have uh, on my website. And if anyone is interested, I have also here a handout with Alexander Technic organizations as well as literature. But again, this is more an ability. You can read the 20 books, but it has little to do with the actual doing it. Thank you so much.